The age of commercial mountaineering is upon us, and while the results are impressive with a staggering number of successful ascents on Mount Everest in Nepal and even K2 in Pakistan, the downside is an unacceptable loss of life with no end in sight. Nepal in 2023 issued a record number of climbing permits, and all one needs to get that permit is the $11,000 fee. It doesn't even matter if you have a pacemaker and have never climbed a mountain. In the first First of several segments that I'll post over the next week or so with esteemed mountaineer and guide Adrian Ballinger of Alpen Glow Expeditions. We discuss in this segment just how preventable most of the 17 deaths on Everest this year were. Adrian is an interviewer's dream and his list of accomplishments on mountains around the world is mind boggling and talk about impressive, including a sense of Mount Everest and K2 without the use of bottled oxygen. At last count 18 ascents of 8,000 meter peaks including ski descents of Makalu and Monaslu and as a protege of legendary mountaineer and guide Russell Bryce Adrian went on to become the CEO and founder of Alpenglow Expeditions which has pioneered the rapid ascent rapid ascent is a program that combines hypoxic training with precise logistics and small team sizes to reduce the overall prep time that a climber has to spend away from home, greatly increasing the chances of summit success on Mount Everest. Mount Everest to Adrian is a very serious business. In this first of several awesome segments with Adrian Ballinger, we talk about how preventable the accidents have been on Mount Everest and what a climber needs to do moving forward to almost guarantee some measure of success on the 8,000 meter peaks. Here's part one with Adrian Ballinger. You trained and got experience by in increments. And, and this is what I think is, there's a big change happening in the world of commercialization of the 8,000 meter peaks where people are coming in today who probably didn't even climb Denali before right. they go straight to Everest. No more, oh, you should train on Cho OU or go do right. it. Agua even. And so th this is what used to be the way to do it is, is increments would give you that experience where you'd get on a Makalu trying to do it with no O2. Nowadays, right. that increment doesn't exist anymore. They're diving headlong into the death zone. So this year, it yes. looks like 17 people are dead. And one of them, a pretty talented, the Hungarian gentleman who went without O2, that's pretty interesting. These seem like these could almost all be preventable deaths, save for maybe the three Sherpa who were killed in the act. So, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I, you know, I'm going to climb back onto my soapbox here. You're just giving me Please so do. many opportunities. No, um, but, you know, uh, they, there's such complicated issues, right? You and I could talk for hours about this. And I am cognizant of a couple of things anytime I dive into these conversations. One is that, I and you and many of us have been part of popularizing Mount Everest and, and encouraging people to go. So I certainly am not trying to gatekeep or all of a sudden say, people shouldn't go. It was better in the old days. I'm, I'm not trying to do that. I'm also cognizant of like, you know, industries changed. I was part of changing the industry and at a certain point frustrated people like Russell and Guy Cotter and others, maybe the previous generation who were like, we don't need to go faster. We don't need to pre-acclimatize. We have a good system. So I'm cognizant that maybe I'm the old guy now somehow. I don't know how it happened, but here we are. Yeah. Um, but with those things said, yeah, Tom, the things you brought up, I just feel so strongly. The biggest thing, my soapbox, Alpenglow's platform is you must have experience to go to Mount Everest because the reality is we all know these stories all the way back to the 96 tragedy where when everything goes right, it's true. Someone who's never climbed before can follow a Sherpa up Mount Everest, summit, and come back down. That can happen when everything goes right. The thing is, when the shit hits the fan, and we know it will continue to hit the fan because we're dealing with Mother Nature in the highest mountain on the planet, when the shit hits the fan, it's experience that allows you to be a confident team member not, not maybe you're not the mountain guide, but you're a competent teammate in assisting everyone to get down alive. And a competent team member can help Sherpa and can help their guides to actually survive. 
Whereas, so it's your choice. It's each client's choice to be a drag, a potential drag or a potential asset when the shit hits the fan. And that, that's what I think we're losing today. You know, Alpenglow still requires five, 6,000 meter peaks, one 7,000 meter peak and one 8,000 meter peak before you go to Everest on our group trip. And, um, it's a lot. And a lot of people, when they call me and say they want to go to Everest and they hear that, they then just go and call my competitors and I see them on the mountain a year later. And is that difficult sometimes for business? Sure. Um, but that's that's my line and I believe in it. And I think my clients have more fun. My teams gel better because everyone knows they've kind of earned their stripes a bit. Um and by the time people get to the mountain, they also, one of the biggest things I think beyond experience and using crampons and using oxygen and all this stuff is that actually probably if they've done seven expeditions before Everest, they've probably failed at least once before. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so important. So if that moment comes on Everest where it's like, you're going to die or someone's going to die or the stars are not aligning, you've been there before and you know, coming off the mountain is not the end of the world. And so my goal is that, yeah, my clients have failed before they get to Mount Everest <laughs> somewhere along the way because they've gotten hit by a storm or avalanche conditions or or their guides gotten sick. Like people forget the guides and Sherpa, they're human too. They get gastro illnesses. They get upper respiratory illnesses. They get altitude sickness and they just have bad days. And so, yeah, that's the experience I hope people will choose to gain before they go to Everest. A lot of people... I hear from who are like, I'd love to climb Mount Everest someday. Um, what would be your advice in a nutshell to someone who's basically off the couch and has doesn't know how to put crampons on? And we see them all the time. Totally. I was going to, I mean, this is the, my favorite part of my job at Alpha Glow Expeditions, right? It's like getting that phone call. And part of the beauty of someone with no experience is they have no bad habits. So I love the people who come, they're like, I want to climb Mount Everest. Like we, we do this thing called the road to Everest and we love putting people on it. Um, so having that dream is a great place to start. The key is just like we talked about earlier, being ready to go step by step um, and, and gain an appreciation of what the sport is and make sure you love it before you spend a hundred thousand dollars in months of your life and take this very real risk. If this season taught anything, and there was a lot of fuck ups this season and a lot of un, a lot of avoidable deaths, like we said, but another point is there will remain to be risk on the mountain. People will continue to die on Mount Everest. And if you get there and you don't know why you're there, then you're in the wrong place. And the way to learn why you're there is by going to smaller mountains developing the love for it. And so that's, that's my, uh, you know, obvious recommendation is take time, go on the journey, make sure you love it. And when you get to Everest, you're just going to have a, a, a fantastic time. Next up with my interviews with Adrian Ballinger, the Mallory and Irvin mystery. Adrian is deeply involved in the effort to try to solve the mystery of Mallory and Irvin in 2019 when he led the Discovery Channel team with Jake Norton to look for the body of Sandy Irvin. That is a great interview. I will have it for you here on this channel in a few days. And when it is out, the link will be in the description of this video. Also in the description of this video will be a link to my Patreon page and a way that you can become a member of this page to support the work that I'm doing here. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, I hope you'll take a moment to subscribe and also leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I am glad you took the time out of your day to be here today. Thank you. I appreciate you. Have a fantastic day. Go out and make the world a better place. Do a kind deed. Peace out, my friends. Have a great day.